before the video starts, I want to thank you all for helping me reach 500 subscribers. It is a milestone that I thought I would never hit. I started YouTube in 2020, and I'm not going to say what content I made because it was really stupid. It wasn't very high effort, and, well, it wasn't, you know, good. But now, obviously, I'm starting to upload higher and higher content, higher quality content on YouTube. I'm trying to get the best looking like stuff like some that are out there make it look realistic for you guys but yeah this is a milestone i tried to reach at the end of the year but you guys crushed it and well we hit it on august 13th 2023 now it might i might have hit it overnight but i woke up this morning on august 13th and i saw that i hit 500 subscribers so I want to thank you all so, so much for hitting that milestone. And I want to thank you for sticking with me for your Microsoft Flight Simulator content content creator. I really do enjoy Microsoft Flight Simulator more and more. And obviously, I will be playing other games. Uh, they will come in like a week or so. You'll see. But yeah, I just wanted to let you, or not let you guys know, but thank you all for helping me hit 500 subscribers. And, well, hope you guys can enjoy the video, and I guess our next goal is 1K. I don't think we'll get it by the end of the year, but let's go ahead and try. So, yeah. Alright, you guys can go watch the video now. Today we'll be flying the Boeing 787-10 from Chicago O'Hare to Zurich. And this flight is, I believe, around 10 hours long. So, should be quite a long haul I guess now I did end up flying to Dubai in my last video as you guys know if you've watched it I flew to Dubai but I thought well sim update 13 beta just came out and I want to fly the 787 to Zurich so yeah that's what we're gonna do we're gonna be going from Chicago hair to Zurich today like I said so yeah obviously brand new sim update 13 the beta has released which means there are many bugs to iron out and there's still stuff to do but now the 787 has an efb which is impressive mainly because it didn't before but now it does so yeah and if you've already downloaded my heavy division animation merge thing i can't update it until sim update 13 actually releases so if you're gonna ask for that i'm sorry that's your answer right there i can't give it to you until sim update 13 actually releases so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and well we're gonna have to go ahead and power the plane on obviously so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and power on the plane and then i will talk to you guys when we are getting everything put in and getting the plane started up So, I pretty much have most things powered on, obviously, the IRS. So, here's the EFB. It's not much. There's not much. There's obviously a performance for your takeoff and whatnot, which I will be using, but, yeah. This also this update also includes Simbrief import, which is awesome. I Heavy Division did it, but I guess WT working title kind of beat them to it, I guess, or I don't know. But, yeah, I just think this is totally awesome. I do like flying the 787, especially with these better capabilities now with the EFB and well the sim brief import which is what I do this checklist has also been updated as you can see I'm kind of like scrolling through everything and well there's a few things that are different they auto kind of complete upon you doing the action so if I were if it says set parking brake and I set parking brake it would go ahead and do that it would complete itself so yeah that's one thing that's very interesting about this new update and yeah, so obviously I have to do what I always do. I have to set up the in it, the through, and then cruising altitude, whatnot, turn on the APU. But yeah, so we do have to turn on forward door power and arm the emergency lights and test the battery. I'm not sure if you anybody really tests the battery. If you're a 787 pilot and you watch my videos, tell me if you test the battery. I have no clue. It's just something I click every time I started up the plane. So I'm going to go ahead and get the in it completed and or the pre-flight completed and then i will go ahead and get the flight plan and the cruising altitude and the takeoff performance completed and i will talk to you guys when we are done with all that okay put in our cruising altitude turn 
turning on flight directors and LNAV and VNAV. Alright, so I have the performance takeoff done, obviously. So, yeah. I have pretty much everything completed. Obvi, uh, we do have to put in the STD and we do have to, or not the STD, but yeah. We have to put it, we have to start the APU, turn on the packs, and we'll go ahead and turn on the fuel pumps in a second here once we call for pushback. So, and we'll also go ahead and turn on TCAS, which it should be on here. Doesn't look like it. No, all right, well, it's just right there. We can turn it to TARA right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and call for pushback in a second here. Once I've fully completed everything, which I just have to put in the borrow set, and then we should be good to go, and yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll talk to you guys when we are pushing back. Hey, this is editing waves here. Uh, Nvidia screwed up at some point. A uh, recording usually doesn't. It usually uh, records GSX just fine, but for some reason in this instance it didn't. Now, very odd. But yeah, hopefully you guys can ignore it. It's not that big of a deal, I guess. You still see me starting the engines and whatnot. So yeah, I'll just get back to the video. I just want to let you guys know. If, you know, it's there's nothing to be displaying. So yeah.
So, like I always do, I'm going to dual start the 787, at least the engines at first. Giving fuel to engine 2. Giving fuel engine one. Setting flaps for takeoff. And let's go ahead and complete our checklist just for before the start. And then we can Auto brake will be set to RTO. Flight controls, we'll go ahead and do a flight control check right now. Flight controls are checked. Ground equipment is obviously clear and we can go ahead and turn off the APU. So it got pretty cloudy and now it's getting sunny again. Uh, it should kind of rotate like this while we're taxiing and taking off. As you can see, the weather radar is, well, yeah, displaying that there's going to be rain. So as you can see, like I was saying earlier with the flaps and stuff, or with the checklist. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and start our taxi to the runway now. And I'll just talk to you guys when we're at the runway. So yeah. So we have to turn on our strobe light and our taxi light because we are now crossing a runway. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Very small runway. I don't think any airliner will be able to take off from this. Maybe a small 737, 700s, but I don't know. I don't fly Chicago a lot. Alright, so the runway is to our left right now, and yeah, so we're going to go ahead and switch our checklist to after takeoff because we are before takeoff right now, so yeah. So you can see there, there is rain, obviously. Um, usually when I fly in or fly out of Chicago, it's usually clear, but I guess today it'll be partly raining. Very odd, but... And we don't have to stop, mainly because there's nobody here. And we can go ahead and turn on our runway turn off and our strobes. So yeah, FS traffic didn't load or something, and I guess it just didn't, so yeah. Okay, so go ahead and turn off our runway turn off, because we don't need it anymore. And we will go ahead and... We're going to stop the plane first. We're going to go ahead and spool the engines. So we'll stabilize engines. And toga. It 
let's go ahead and release our brakes. Gear up, and I don't know why, but the 787 veers to the left or right on takeoff. Very odd. But yeah, so we are on our way to Zurich now. I'm gonna go ahead and engage the autopilot in a second here. We have to mainly fly it. This thing climbs like crazy. See, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on autopilot and turn on auto throttle so it can slow the plane down and whatnot. So yeah. So we're not at our cruising altitude, but we do have around, I don't know how long, around, probably around 10 minutes before we reach our cruising altitude. So yeah, uh, our next checklist is descent, obviously. There is no uh, cruise checklist that wouldn't really necessarily make sense. But yeah, so the weather in Chicago and Michigan right now is kind of crazy. And obviously the weather radar is working in this plane. Uh, we can go ahead and turn off most lights besides the glare shield because I do like the glare shield lights just by seeing, just so I can see pretty much everything. So I'm going to go ahead and let the plane continue climbing itself to 37,000 feet. And hopefully we will not run into weather, but we shouldn't. We're pretty high up for it to, well, attack us, I guess you could say. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll also go ahead and talk to you guys when we're at a cruising house. So yeah. Alright, so the weather radar has picked up a lot heavier weather. Obviously, uh, I was getting a warning. And it says anti-ice and it says insufficient fuel. But I, I don't. I manually entered the fuel correctly. I'm not sure why. But it probably won't be a concern to me. We can go ahead and turn on our passenger, passenger seatbelt sign. because, Or turn them off. Because, well... We're at cruise now. But yeah, so the weather radar is picking up heavy weather. And, well, you can see it. It is very heavy looking weather. We should be avoiding it. As you can see, we are at 37,000. And the clouds seem to be around like 10,000 feet below us. So we can go ahead and kind of just chill out for now. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let the plane fly itself for the next 10 hours. And talk to you guys then.
so it's been a little while and our top descent is very close so i'm gonna go ahead and set up for our descent we're gonna go ahead and go down to 7,000 feet obviously i will probably change it once we get lower and lower so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and let the plane descend itself so i can yeah so it should descend itself like normal uh it's pretty the 787 is pretty good at it obviously we have to do a checklist auto brake our landing data is there and our approach and briefing is completed so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys when we are a lot closer to zurich so yeah talk to you guys then okay so we have to change it from into hpa i don't know inches to hpa i don't know what hpa is but it's 1012 or it's 1021 i forget i looked at the beginning of this but it should be 1012 if not i'll correct it it's either 1012 or 1021 i have to look up what hpa means guys yeah eh. okay so Zurich is to our right as you can see obviously um you could just, we're, we're going to go ahead and keep doing our flaps down to 30, which is what our landing flaps for today oh, are. Dear. We'll also go gear down because it's going to start giving me that stupid, oh, stupid ass warning. Wait, Too low. Is, oh, yeah, I forget. It's, it's, it's gear. Too, Too low, low gear. gear. And it, it's annoying as shit. So we're going to arm the speed brake. As you can see, it auto completed on the checklist. So I'm going to go ahead and wait till we make our turn, then I'll activate the localizer and the approach mode so we can hit the glide slope and then land on the runway, so I'll talk to you guys then. Okay, so I hit the glide slope, it seems. Speed brake, uh, speed brake is um, mainly dependent on the throttle for some reason, and both the 787 and the 787-8 in the sim, it's like if, I don't know, it's very odd. I don't have a video to show you guys, but you guys just saw it. So I kind of do have to focus up on this landing, like uh, like always. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, focus up on the landing, and then I will talk to you guys when we are, well, on the ground. So yeah, I'll go ahead and talk to you guys then. So trying to manually fly it in decently. 
and I'm trying to keep it on center line because my landings have been falling apart ever since I don't know. It's just 14, not been 30, on center line 20, for a while. 10. All right, so we're on the ground now, and I don't have my landing gear monitor on my second monitor, so I can't tell you what that was. But yeah, uh, it didn't look very smooth, uh, but I it was probably two something negative two something. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll slow down the plane. Obviously, we gotta get it to not southwest taxi speed, and then we can taxi off to the gate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna mainly I'm gonna slow it down, and I'm gonna go ahead and release our speed brakes or not release it. But we can put our speed brake back to normal, increase the throttle just a little bit, and here is our shutdown tax or our shutdown checklist. Obviously, we're going to put our flaps up, and it should auto-complete, as you can see. That's what This brand new checklist is actually really awesome. I do like these avionics, the avionics update 2 checklist. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and continue taxiing to, towards the gate. Now, I do believe United does operate the 767 on this flight, but we're not flying that shitty plane. So yeah, I don't know where the gates coordinated gates for any of these air or any of like airlines are but uh i did park at the united gates at o'hare but i don't know where any gates are at the at zurich so we're just going to kind of park at like the closest gate and then i will talk to you guys when we are shutting down the aircraft shutting down the switches and whatnot turning turning stuff off you know so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and talk to you guys when we are shutting down everything So we're going to go ahead and start up the APU so we can mainly get the power on and so everything doesn't shut down when we shut down our engines. So yeah.
So, I'm not like necessarily seeing any markings for a specific aircraft. I'm just gonna have to guess. I'm just gonna go to like the farthest one. We'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah. So, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set parking brake. We can continue our shutdown checklist. Uh, we need our hydraulic panel shut or set. So, let's go ahead and do that. And the ex hopefully we can turn on the external powers. There we go. Sometimes the external powers are buggy. I'm not sure why. So, seems to be pretty much complete. We do have to turn off the fuel pumps. And then our parking brake is set. So, we can cross that off. And the last thing we need to do is shut off the fuel control switches. So, yeah, today's flight was around 10 hours, and it was actually very enjoyable, because the 787 is an enjoyable plane. I like flying this plane usually, just mainly because it is a very capable plane. It doesn't overshoot any waypoints, like the 777, and it doesn't rock back and forth on a straight line, again, like the 777. So we're going to also do the secure checklist with the IRS's off and whatnot. So we're going to continue on with that. But yeah, make sure to like, subscribe if you enjoyed. Share with your friends. Once again, thank you for 500 subscribers. Our next milestone is 1K. So hope to see you guys at 1K. I don't think we'll get it by the end of the year. But hey, thanks for 500. So yeah, talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.